How's it going everyone and welcome back to another video. In this video I'm going to be talking about this Toyota RAV4 that I'm working on. It's got an engine management light on, it's got the DPF light flashing on the right hand side of the screen. It's also got other warning lights on as well and it's got a fault code that can't be cleared. That fault code is P2463, particulate filter restriction soot accumulation. So the soot accumulation that DPF is up to high, it has flagged to this fault code and then it can't be cleared afterwards. I'm gonna be talking through some of the steps I used to fix this issue. This one was a little bit more difficult than uh, other DPF faults that I've come across. So I'm gonna be sharing with you some key takeaways on this Toyota in this video. <laughs> Okay, so the first thing I do anytime I have a DPF related fault like I have here is put the scan tool in, obviously read the fault codes, but then pull up the live data and the differential pressure on that DPF. I wanna get a reading as to how built up with soot that DPF is. In this case, it was nothing out of the ordinary. It was in that safe range that I would see. It was a tad under 200 uh, millibar, which is 20 kPa in conversion and that is absolutely fine that's a normal type of soot accumulation range i've seen tons and tons of time before with that said i then set about doing a uh, cleaning so using the worth as you can see here pumping it in to the inlet side of that dpf allowing it to sit and then i was going to bring it for some road tests afterwards to drive that soot accumulation down that's exactly what i did so what you see in that last clip was the work dpf cleaner being pumped in to the actual dpf and to start the process of trying to reduce that soot accumulation with on the vehicle cleaner now if you can do it and it works it's definitely the best option in regards to cost and time you don't have to take any parts off all you have to do is find the inlet pipe remove it and pump the cleaner in there on this dpf here which came off a of holden you have a cat actually up the front here and then there's a dpf at the rear of it this is the inlet this is the outlet and between the two of them you have the differential pressure so you pump it in the inlet allow it to soak it then starts to break down the soot accumulation and with the temperatures being brought up extensive drive afterwards it can pump out a load of that soot accumulation and greatly reduce down the dpf soot loading now i have seen fantastic results using that method over and over again so i definitely um recommend if your if your levels are okay if it's within a, a good range to do it that way what i will say is not all dpfs can be saved um this is a dpf out of a hold which i said is actually out of captiva it had oil being pumped through it so there was no way of saving this the cat got damaged that got damaged and it needed a whole unit to be replaced the other one is if you have too much soda accumulation slash ash buildup, you do have other options with removing the actual DPF and sending it away for cleaning. That is something I did in my workshop back in Ireland a number of times. Uh, it was sent away um, by post, so I used to take them out, box it up, and I'd send it to a specialized um, DPF cleaner. It was around, from memory, I think 200 euros. Uh, they'd give you a printout before and after, but it was successful. Um, that was before I started using these cleaners a bit more because I sent away a couple of them that probably could have been rectified by just the cleaner themselves. But also a great service. Also something if you have in your area could be a viable one for you. The issue with sending them away is the time. Um, it's gonna take some time in postage, getting it there and getting it shipped back as well. The cost of them is quite high, but in comparison to a brand new DPF, it's definitely a great option to do because the DPFs are so expensive. So if you're finding that you're having no luck with the cleaners, I would recommend using that option before replacing the DPF if you have one that's in your area and it's suitably priced um, for your customer. Now in this case, back to the Toyota, there is some other circumstances or conditions that you need to be aware of before just doing a cleaner and sending it out. In some Toyotas, there is what's called a fifth injector. I did a video in the past on a Ford, which has the fuel vaporizer. Those fifth injectors or vaporizers 
are to bring the temperature up in the exhaust to aid in the regeneration process so you can have higher temperatures and it can be burning off that soot. Now what a lot of people might not be aware of is the underlying issues that can cause DPFs to soot up. That fifth injector also has a secondary fuel filter in some of these vehicles. So that secondary fuel filter, if it was to start getting blocked up, if there was dirt build up, it can affect the fifth injector, which in turn can affect the DPF. So if you have, for example, a 2.8 liter one GDF TV engine that has the Land Cruiser High Ace and Hilux, uh, a few other models as well that run that uh, platform, that engine, you're going to have that fuel um, secondary fuel filter in place. We have replaced a few of them in the workshop at this stage, and it is a good maintenance item to get used to replacing. Now the other ones in other makes and models of vehicles are glow plugs. Coolant temperatures have to be good. Also the pressure sensors. Any of those issues like crack pipes, um, split hoses, um, coolant temperatures that are out and glow plugs that are not doing what they should, always look into those to make sure that your DPF is working correctly based off those faults because it can be a domino effect if you have one fault it can trigger another and therefore um, speed up the soot accumulation on the vehicle now the levels that you need to look for to safely do a forced regeneration even are at idle levels less than 10 millibar uh, for example you can go a little bit over that but general rules rule of thumb is 10 millibar or below is the pressure in the um, DPF that you would want to see. Now at 2000 RPM, bring it up to 2000 RPM, a safe range that I go off is 150 to 200 max millibar. If it's 300 or above, I'm not touching it. I'm not going near it. Not a safe level and could certainly cause an issue. Now, 150 millibar is the equivalent of 15 kPa. So 200 millibar is 20 kPa. Depending on your scan tool, depending on your readings, that's the conversion ratio you want it. So that is the general specs that I go off. The temperatures that I want to see when I'm test driving the vehicles is 500 and above. 550, 600 plus is when I know that it's burning off the soot when I'm doing the extensive test drives. So that's some information on the DPF, the specs of what you want um, in soot accumulation, and also some of the methods of cleaning. I'm now gonna jump back into this video with um, the issues I ran into after doing the cleaning on it. Currently working on a Toyota RAV4, as you can see, we have the DPF warning flashing on the right hand side, engine management light on the left hand side, DPF related fault codes with soot accumulation, etc. etc. Um, long story short, on this one, I've bring in, I brought it for two extensive drives. I've also done the cleaner on it, and I can tell by the uh, differential pressure sensors um, in the exhaust that this level is now fine. The DPF is not sooted up at all. Everything is uh, returned to normal and I have brought it for the recommended extended drives with high RPM, monitored the temperatures in the exhaust. The So everything looks to be okay but when I go to clear the fault codes it will not clear the uh, lights flash on the warnings stay on and it uh, comes back instantly so what I'm gonna do when I get back to the workshop is disconnect the battery for an extended period of time and see if that clears it I have uh, hooked up the hotel I have hooked up the think tool I've also checked a snap-on scan tool and none of them are clearing the faults. So we have an issue here and um, it's not going away. The other thing is I'm very, very happy with the levels in the exhaust system now. That DPF is no longer sooted up. It's right in the, in the normal range and um, I have done the test drive as per 
as per manual, as per instructed, uh, twice, and nothing has changed on that. And like I said, it's also been cleaned, so I have put cleaner through it, brought the levels right down. So the only thing I can think of um, to try and aid this is uh, disconnect the battery. So I'm gonna do that when I get back to the workshop and I will update afterwards. Battery's been disconnected for half an hour. I'm gonna flick on the ignition now. And the light has cleared for the first time. So I'll go here. This will have to communicate again. Trouble codes not to take it. So for the first time, this has been cleared. We'll see what happens when I start it. And the light is now off. I'm gonna bring it for a test drive and see what it does. I'm just pulled in now after the final road test on this Toyota and we have a success. The lights are now off, no more flashing DPF light, engine light off, no permanent fault code stored and I'm going to be able to give this back to the customer. This was quite a difficult one to do. It's not one I had encountered before, it was a bit more challenging. Uh, you can't do a forced regen. Um, in the static position like a service regeneration like you would normally it that option is not available on this vehicle uh, so that was one issue after uh, extended road test first of all which extended road test is you're talking about 30 minutes plus 30 45 minutes driving high rpm keeping it in the same gear for um, uh, extended period and monitoring the temperatures, making sure they get up hot enough to where it can burn off some soot. That was done, levels had dropped but not enough. Then the cleaner was used, so the Worth DPF cleaner was used afterwards. The levels dropped again and I brought it for another very extended road test. After that road test, I was 100% certain with the levels that it was fine. Uh, everything was within the parameters that this should be driven normally. Um, so I had no concern with DPF needing replacement or anything else going on for that matter. We, we had the levels back right, but the faults couldn't be cleared. I had used Snap-on, Autel and the Think Tool to try and clear the code, see if I could do any resets of the DPF, clear values, nothing was working. I could not get them fault codes off whatsoever. Uh, what I ended up doing uh, is I disconnected the battery, uh, went to lunch and when I came back off lunch it had a half an hour or so disconnected, put it back, the fault codes had cleared. That was literally my last um, thought on this, was to try and disconnect the battery and see if I could reset. And it did, thankfully. I brought it for a road test now. It's done nearly 100 kilometers of test driving altogether today. And finally, we're gonna be able to give it back to the customer. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful and informative. If you did, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.